Some of you might be asking, why am I using this sort of roundabout technique to make these bold lines instead of just plugging in here for, with a 14 round and carving them in? And partly it's about control, and partly it's because I just, in my own experience, sculpted lines like this, if they're done right, seem to uh, hold up longer uh, with fewer blowouts and dropouts than a. Uh, a large bore line or it's just using a single pass. We've got enough examples in my own collection of both kinds of work that have aged for a while that um, you know I developed a very clear preference for sculpting lines a little bit. I think that definitely comes down to preference, you know, as far as when I had my back outlined by Shige, you know, there, there's a certain ruggedness to it all. There's light lines, there's blowouts, there's skipped lines. And uh, I asked him if he goes back through and, you know, beefs up lines or anything, and he says, never. <laughs> right. Never do it outline twice, you know, it's just, but that's to get that authentic look it's a different intention, you know? Right. He's not saying that his outlines are perfect. He's saying that to get the that look, that Japanese look, I guess there's there's an aspect of letting it be imperfect as part of it. And so it comes down to it's not a right or wrong way. It's just a style. It's a matter of expression. Because I definitely like to have clean lines, but I also have definitely ad adopted or adapted more of that kind of um, tattoo-y look. But it's about subtleties. You know, it, and it all depends. It's not, it's only for that style of work that I would do that. 
Hey, Jeff, before yeah. this thing kind of crossed behind all that stuff and came all the way down there to there, but I thought it was getting a little crowded, but then I think this is sort of weird. I'm not sure what's the best way to <coughs> handle this claw here. Yeah, I know that this, these two little legs, yeah, there's two big ones. Oh, wait, two okay, little so... Ones. Let's see, one, two, so this would be a joint, and then there would actually be the little claw, so. Well, I don't know, I think that this one's shorter. One, two, three, one, no, no, they were the same. Oh. They both, no, you're right, you're right, the front one had a, one less joint. So this should just be a little claw thing. Yeah, I think so. One, two, three, yeah. Okay. Um, but then that doesn't cross over like that. Uh, hmm. yeah, we got a lot of elements sort of yeah. coming together here and it's, it needs to make sense without being too forced. Uh, no, just figuring this out. How long have we been at it now? I guess it could be a little longer. It's around probably. Six right okay. Yeah, I think we've been at it about two hours. Hmm. I don't know. Thoughts? Um, this one is longer. Let's see. That has four. This is one, two, three. So this would have one more. One more. Okay. So it's going to need to go behind, or maybe this should be the one that crosses out there. This guy, I don't know, gets crowded. Oh, got alcohol? Yeah, yeah. That's a scary question right now, huh? Mm -hmm. oh. I was once doing a guest spot at Gilmani's shop a long, long time ago, and I reached for a spray bottle and sprayed down my client. And He's like, oh, and I, I was like, oh, sorry, man, alcohol. And I looked up uh, closely, and it was bleach. Oh, I just man. didn't say anything. <laughs> oh. It's the danger of working in somebody else's shop. Thank you. Although, you know, that's the kind of mistake you don't make twice. <coughs> A little nice healthy burn there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I noticed your lines here look like they're not just all totally single pull, but there's a little bit of you know, rocking back and forth in places. I can see some areas mm -hmm. where it's a little bit of double thickness. And, you know, I mean, so some kind of a compromise between a single yeah, yeah. pass in there, which, you know, obviously you're, you're trying to get as much of it as you can that way, while at the same time cleaning up where it needs it the most. This guy, just keep him a little shorter and do something like that. That works. That's a little less crowded down there. Yeah. Am I the only one here having a mad coffee craving? I, no. Nope, you're not. I can't have coffee after three. My normal cutoff time is six, and we're right around there. Yeah, I can push it a little bit. I'm on really limited sleep right now, so... I yeah, <laughs> that makes a difference. <clears throat> Plus, I don't think I'm going to have any trouble sleeping later on. My whole thing to avoid having sleep problems is to just work until you're so exhausted that you have no choice. Yeah. It's probably not healthy. 
We ran a marathon last Sunday in New Orleans, and wow. on Saturday we decided it was a good idea to go get our feet massaged by a Chinese reflexology place, which I guess your reflexology is all about connections with your organs and mm -hmm. toxins, and so that night I got a full one hour sleep before I woke up sick. Or you just couldn't sleep because it woke you up so much? Or? Um, yeah, I, well, I was nervous about running a marathon because I've never done that I before. I see just laying there, tossing and turning or whatever. Yeah, and then I woke up with like, I think just everything releasing in my head and mm. slight fever and sick and it was a really hard run. Oh, I'm sure. <clears throat> so now I want to do it one more time before I die at least so I can try to do it without being sick. I'd like to do one a year, but I don't know. Are you already getting to that point where it's harder and harder to... Well, I just started a year, uh, just about two years ago, and I've done a few, I've done four half marathons in building up to this full marathon. Haven't you had a couple of uh, injuries related yeah. to that? Yeah, a few. <clears throat> How far is the full marathon? It's 26.2 miles. So, it, how long did it take? It took me four hours and 55 minutes. My goal was 4.45, but came in a little, a little slow. My wife could have done it in 4.45, but she decided to, <laughs> to do the sociable thing and hang with you. Yeah. She's just a machine. She just rock solid. But we've done all of our half marathons. One, one or the other is has a harder time at certain points, and so we just made it a habit to hang tight. Since that's since we're doing it together right, anyway. Exactly. I mean, what's five minutes? You know. Corey Norris did it in. Under four hours, oh. he beat us by an hour. But he has much more discipline and character than me. You know, this train and longer legs, time. longer yeah. legs. That forget. counts. What was it? What was that, Matt? Like training for a marathon and other physical training and the discipline for that. Do you notice that affecting your art at all? Yeah, it's been a huge distraction this <laughs> last year and a half. It just takes a lot of time, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, when I count up the hours that it's taken to run just to, for the training, I could have painted 20 paintings. Right, but it probably also made you a much more fit person. Yeah, I feel a lot better about myself and it's a new, it's a new challenge, just a different phase, you know? After all, I'm in my 40s and it seems pretty appropriate to try to do a marathon for a nice traditional midlife crisis rather than well, self-destructive. Yeah, or the pointless sports car or whatever. Yeah. Not that the sports cars are pointless, but if you turn 45 and buy one then. I think you just need to call call a horse a horse. Yeah. You're having a midlife crisis. Well, I've never been in any sort of good shape in my life, so it was it was definitely just a. Uh, I woke up at the age of 40, just going, man, I'm overweight. My back hurts. Everything hurts. I can't run across the street without hurting my ankle or something. So started at square one. Now I'm super glad it's been really awesome. I wish I would have exercised for the last 20 years. But yeah, it does you take up a lot of time. think of it in terms of lost paintings. And Not really, no. Hopefully it'll keep me healthy enough to stick around and paint more. Yeah. I need to do more of that. 
you know, ever since the, you know, I finally had my like midlife uh, exam, you know, and I just have slightly elevated cholesterol, but you can make a huge difference with that without having to make any big sacrifices just with, you know, 45 minutes on the treadmill or whatever. And right. Even then, I, you know, I'm trying to uh, retrain my mind to not think so much about the other stuff I'm trying to get done, you know. Right. And Michelle's really, really good about that. She'll work out every day no matter what. And uh, she's trying to encourage me to be better about it. It's an investment, you know? Yeah. You guys find it hard to keep healthy when you spend most of the time sitting down? Yeah. Well, you know, I got a three year old, and that, that just, you know, it keeps you on your toes. And um, real careful about diet. You know, you eat really well, and, uh, you know, mostly organic foods and very low fat diet. So my weight hasn't changed in, you know, 20 years or whatever. My but, hasn't either. You know, I mean, I used to do a lot of biking and kayaking and stuff and, you know, you get older and life just gets more complicated. I don't know if it's like that for everyone, but it's certainly been the case for me. But that's just an excuse. There's a lot of factors in it. I think in general, you know, the, the typical things that ALA tattooer is, you know, being overweight, um, low back, carpal tunnel, or, you know, just aches and pains, all those kinds of things, or TMJ from stressing. Mm -hmm. It's like all those things add up from kind of overexposure to whatever. <clears throat> so if I think the people would be a lot better off to take half an hour out of their day and go for a walk or a bike ride or a run or something just to clear the mind, you know, and, and that would be physically helpful too. But we're also stubborn yep. and just plod through and push through or instead of doing that, we go and have drinks. I'm trying to keep a balance of both. Right. And uh, Live your life. Yeah, do some exercise and still go to happy hour or have a couple drinks and, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, so life far, shouldn't so be good. a punishment. But it becomes a punishment later on if you're not healthy, that's for sure. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of older tattooers that are suffering quite a bit. I've been real fortunate with my lower back because I've always, I think, just sat right. Mm -hmm. But um, now it's the hands. That's, that's been a recurring theme. And then it's... Well, you can overdo it, you know. And it's mostly not from tattooing, no. I think it's mostly from using a Wacom tablet. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, is that like drawing with a pencil? That's um, a small grip, or...? You have to sort of bear down, and, you know, I'm using it for... Not for drawing, but for editing, mostly. Oh. And, uh... So it's a very locked, kind of... Tensed, sort of... Position, you know, you're trying to scrub down to one frame and, you know, find the exact point where the person's mouth starts to open or whatever and, you know, right. you don't even realize you're tensing up. That's like trying to watch a bunch of YouTube videos on your phone, your hand starts cramping. <clears throat> Yeah, like, you know, I'm typing any amount of stuff on my phone. I don't use my thumb anymore. I hmm. do it two-handed. I hold the phone in one hand and basically hen-peck it with my forefinger with the other hand, because otherwise I start to feel it after just a minute. I think we're going to have a whole generation of teenagers with carpal tunnel. Yeah. I got carpal tunnel around 19 from, uh, you know, I was doing... I would do graphite pencil sketches, get prints made, and then I would hand color them with Prismacolor. Oh! And, uh, 
hours and hours every day and it just wrecked my grip. So I've always had a big grip tattooing and still to this day I can't really write with a pencil or anything or that small grip for very long. Yeah, I really like where tattoo tubes have gone, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, in, in the time I've been involved in this industry, they've, they've just, there was a time when it was hard to find anything bigger than a half an inch, you know. Right. And now they're bigger and better shape and squishy and... Well, the first tattoo I ever got in a shop, the guy had like a three inch grip tube. <laughs> it was the biggest tube I'd Tin ever seen. Tin can kind of thing. And and uh, I had bought like half inch grips or something. And then I saw that and I, I only went on the search for them because it looked cool. Yeah. I didn't know that it was gonna save my hand for 15 years. I always wanted glasses because I thought they looked cool, and now <laughs> I don't feel so so much that way. I swear I turned 40 and I read part of a book for about four hours and then I looked up and my left eye wouldn't focus. And I've had to have glasses since then. Just wow. like, it just... That suddenly. It, it seemed like it. I'm sure. For me. I think I just hadn't read a book in a long time. Yeah. It happens pretty suddenly. You know, your uh, the lens on your eye has got this sort of clear gelatin in it that keeps your uh, lens flexible, and then you've got muscles that push and pull on that to change the shape and focus. And no matter how healthy those muscles are, the gel inside the eye actually stiffens up, and so it really? just becomes harder and harder for the muscles to focus and there comes a point where you just you need lenses in front of your eyes you know you need some kind of help hmm. now they're talking about a treatment where they would schlork out that natural gel and then replace it with some synthetic thing which you know I would not be first in line for that no way but if it was something they did millions of times with success every time it was routine it would be kind of cool to put the reading glasses back in the desk and forget about them for the next 20 years. Yeah. I have a friend that he had a torn ligament in his shoulder for years and uh, they discovered it and um, the treatment instead of what where they would normally have done surgery they took his blood out a bunch of blood they put it in a spinner and and separated all the platelets from the red blood cells. And then, so they had all the white blood cells and then injected all of those into the shoulder and it swelled up like a water balloon. And it just put a concentrated amount of his own healing power. Hmm. I don't know what it's called, but it's pretty crazy. Science. It makes so much sense when you, it's like, oh yeah, just take the healing part of your blood and concentrate it. Makes sense.
Hey Ben, the preview I'm seeing up there looks pretty dark. I don't know if it's all looking like that. Uh, the preview is not that dark. It's okay. Like monitors that we need. Okay. So we don't need to turn up the gain, in other words. Yeah, let's really do the same. Okay. We have a lot of positive feedback from the chat room. Nice. From the 500 plus folks that are watching this right now. <coughs> Did you forget you were getting tattooed? Yeah, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just listening and it kind of fades in and out of the uh, awareness of the sensation. <laughs> Those times are nice. Did you get your coffee? Oh, no. I think that... Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe that'll be time to take a stretch break. Um, you know, when I first got the Icon power supply, probably about four years ago, uh, four or five years ago, it had the option... Well, first I went to just a you had the option for a, a, a switch instead of a tap on, tap on off. It. Yeah, it was like a you would step on it, it would turn on. And I did that because I hated the cord, and so I would just turn it on and kick it out of the way. And I just <coughs> I tattoo very <coughs> quickly, so I just got used to it with that. And then I ended up when I was working in Japan, I made a little just a toggle switch just for space saving. And it also kept off the floor. I didn't like the idea of having something that I stepped on and then cleaning it and all that. So, I don't know, just like one thing to eliminate. And I felt like it kept me moving more fluid, keeping it on. It's a lot more dangerous and I poke myself a lot more, but. And then uh, with the Cheyenne machine, that's just one of the options just to turn it on or turn it off. So really it was just because the cords you know, <clears throat> I tried one of those cordless ones for a minute and didn't blow you away. No, I didn't really give it much of a chance, but <clears throat> anything to over a long period of time, anything to eliminate time. Yeah, well, there's another thing there too. Is uh, there's an ergonomic issue with it? You know, because you can Are end you up putting up your foot up. Well, you could end up in a stretched locked position for a long time <clears throat> yeah. um, without even realizing you're doing it because you're busy and then you stand up and your leg is all numb.
going to be any color in that wrist at the second tip? I think the color is going to end with the rocks and the crab. Yeah. So there's some rocks there that, that are going to bring down. a little color in. Well, are you feeling like you need to move on to a new area? Um, yeah. Well, um, I know this is a horrible chunk of skin, but we could work that a little bit while yeah. we're waiting for our coffee. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll uh, let me just finish this point. I mean, maybe after I break, if you want, we could trade uh, places, mm -hmm. and you could get the shoulder cap a little bit, and um, I'm sure I'll find things to do elsewhere. Sounds good. And at one point, we'll need to uh, go face down with him. Okay. Okay, I've almost wiped that finger off, so, um, yeah, I'll get out of the way now. Okay. Let's see. Turn up his arm just a little bit. Mm hmm uh -huh. Yeah. Got that all right? Yep. <coughs> With the rocky area, I'm going a lot less beefy with the lines. Still some pronounced line work to bring it out from the waves. But about half the thickness of on the, on the crab. I don't think our guests here in the shop have said a thing since we started. Uh -oh. Anyone here in the background got any feedback so far? Nope. <laughs> I think we must be explaining ourselves really well. Elbow. Yep. Painful for both artist and client. Hmm. Who could bring me another stack of paper towels?
Yeah. When you're doing gray wash, do you prefer bug pins or regular Um, I guess I prefer a bug pin. Uh, the Cheyenne needles are a little smaller diameter. Was it you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so they're already naturally a little bit smaller. But when I made my own needles, which was up until a year and a half ago, I, I used um, bug pins. I really use them for everything. Just I like the smaller holes to get smoother transitions. So you were using them for color too? Yeah, I was using icons, um, and they have a, they were ground, they just had a natural texture to them, so it seemed to work pretty good. Did you ever find that those um, kind of flattened out a lot faster than regular needles? Yeah, yeah, I would switch them out in metal tubes, for sure. Because uh, the only time I ever used those, I was collaborating with Aaron Kay, and uh, he set up two identical magnums at the beginning of the session. I'm like, so as far as I can tell, there's no difference between those two. What's up? And he's like, well, in three hours, I put this one down and pick this one up. Yeah. Yeah, they, make, they turn into little blades. Yeah. You know, another thing that I don't think I ever would have fully appreciated until I started using the steel tip disposables, the uh, true tubes, is uh, that Really, uh, a tube tip, even if it's steel, has got a very, very limited life, you know? Yeah. Um, pretty much the life of one major project, and then you've already got reduced ink flow and uh, more chaotic things that might happen while you're working and more chances of paper towel fluff getting stuck in there and all that other stuff. Uh, pretty much as soon as you've, you've logged one tattoo with it, so, you know... Then you're scrubbing and claving it and rinse and repeat enough times and uh, you've got reduced performance with each, each piece. And I used to have this thing where I'd, you know, set up and I'd start working and, and quit and change the needle and the tube, not knowing which was the source of the problem, you know, but knowing that if I changed them both, chances are it would be all right. And ever since I started uh, using the disposables, that, that stopped, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that pretty much told me what the problem was. So do you only now exclusively use the true tubes because of the disposables? Yeah, right now I'm, I'm a true tube user exclusively. Yeah, right around that same time, um, our uh, autoclave got fried by a power surge and it was just sort of like, okay, <laughs> let me just give this a good shot before I go invest another 3500 bucks in this yeah. otherwise useless piece of equipment. Thank you.
luck has definitely been on our side with the uh, stencil and drawing and everything holding up. Um, not really. I think that if if we start crossing over into each other's areas like multiple times, if I go back and work the waves, and he comes in colors after I've done a pass of color here, you know, we just want to make sure we communicate a little bit about if there's any areas that have been hit particularly hard already or whatever. Um, but I think uh, both of us are using conservative enough technique and being methodical enough. Like I'm not just going to keep building up lines and going back around and building them up more. I'm trying to hit each one once and move on. And you know, if you haven't done a lot of large work, as you start taking on larger projects, you'll, you'll encounter challenges with uh, being able to keep track of everything. But, uh, you know, that's all stuff that you, you just have to confront head on and learn it. Mike Cole came up to me at Paradise maybe two or three years ago. He was watching me and he goes, ah, uh, pinky stretch. Pinky stretch. Because I, I do this. Right. And he, he goes, I did that for 12 years. He goes, you only got about 12, 10 to 12 years out of that before your finger starts hurting. <clears throat> I was like, oh, I'm doing great. I swear it was like a week later, I'm like, man, my pinky. Because I added up the years and I was like, oh man, I'm past due. I'm 13 years in, now I'm 15 years in. And he goes, he says he has to tuck it in now and stretch with his knuckle. And yeah, I either do it this way. Sore. Yeah, I either do it this way or sometimes thumb and forefinger, but. Pinky is like the weakest finger on your hand. My pinky is pretty strong. You got the kung fu pinky. It never rests. I go to take a drink of a drink, and it's like it's <laughs> embarrassing. Hi, I'm Jeff's pinky. Good to meet you, everyone. Probably use a bathroom break in the next like 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Or so. That's what the towel's for. Ah, yes, yes. Tea towel. 
It's a multi-use towel. It's actually made out of sham wow. Yeah. Be sham wow if I put it. Yes. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Himself. And it was real, real early in my career, you know, it was my first few months. And we had this contraption in the shop that I think they got from Guantanamo Bay called a slant board. It's this old, old school thing. Uh -huh. You know, it was basically a piece of 2 by 12 with a, another couple pieces of 2 by 12 sticking out of it at right angles and some vinyl stapled over part of it. And uh, you hung it over the back of a chair. And the person was supposed to sit on this thing and not fall off while you tattooed their chest or whatever. Uh -huh. So I've got this, this kid on the slant board, and it's his first tattoo, and it's the size of a dinner plate in the center of his chest. I'm going to start working. I'm about three lines into it, and uh, the phone's for me. So I whip off the gloves, pick up the phone. I see movement out of the side of my corner of my eye, and there he is sitting on the floor, and it's a growing puddle. Oh. And he was just so mortified by the whole thing he went and hid in the back room until everybody who was getting tattooed this was a busy shop at the time that happened was done and gone and then finally came out and re-emerged and sat for the whole thing wow is that pin did i move that pin oh This guy in before I lose him. I'm gonna take that coffee break. <coughs> Sorry, microphone listeners, for that cough in your ear. All right, get out of your way. Yeah, maybe if you could come up as far as that. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, maybe we could swap after that. That looks amazing. Thanks. Love the break off at the bottom on the knuckle bones. Can you hang for like a couple more minutes? Yeah. Can you do that. Can you do that. Let me stick this. Oh. Just kind of hug it. You can just put your arm right on it. Yeah. If you are going to pee yourself, tell me. Gonna get like one minute worth of lines here. Yeah, it was really good. Just tattooing. Very glad. 